Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about a feature that might be coming in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC, and that is new forms for previously existing Pokemon. And I think it's going to come through the terastalizing phenomenon. Let's discuss it. Every new generation of Pokemon has a gimmick, something that is added by Game Freak to alter battle or exploration in the world of Pokemon for these new games. In this generation, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we have Terastalizing. It is a feature that's been changed up within raids. So now you take on Terra type Pokemon and then you can catch them and utilize their special Terra types or special abilities or special marks that come with them. Or you can Terastalize your own Pokemon. They get a cute little crystal and hat they get a type change, it really does change the dynamics of battle. Raids were introduced in Pokemon Go and then made their way over to the main series with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Back then, those raids also utilized the gimmick of the generation. Pokemon Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed in these raids, and you could catch their forms and use them. This was one of the only ways to get certain Gigantamax Pokemon. Gigantamax Pokemon, unlike Dynamax Pokemon, would take on a brand new form. It was, for better or worse, a new temporary form of evolution. This takes inspiration, of course, from the most famous gimmick Pokemon has ever introduced. Not rotation battles, Mega Evolution. Mega Evolution was introduced as a feature in Pokemon X and Y and allowed you to evolve a Pokemon for a fourth time, if it had already evolved twice or for a third time from its three other forms, into a temporary evolution in battle where it would get access to new abilities, new moves, the Pokemon became stronger, and of course, for marketing purposes, got a brand new design. Sometimes these Pokemon got two new designs, like with Mewtwo and with Charizard. This was at the height of the new Pokemania of X and Y, and it is incredibly popular to this day. Many games in the Pokemon franchise still utilize Mega Evolution in their gameplay mechanics. Pokemon Go has Mega Evolution. Pokemon Unite, I believe, has Mega Evolution, or they might be using Gigantamax at this point. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee carried uh, Mega Evolution onto the Nintendo Switch. So these features are still very popular, and the Pokemon company understands their popularity. As I stressed before, one of the biggest keys to its popularity is the fact that it gives Pokemon a form change. Not only does this change the Pokemon's appearance in game, which is appealing to people, it gives older designs another chance to shine. It can improve upon already great designs like with Mega Lucario and with Charizard, but it can give older Pokemon a chance who didn't really have one before. Mega Audino, Mega Slowbro are some of my favorites that take some weaker designs and make them a little bit better. We had this with Gigantamaxing in Pokemon Sword and Shield. There were new forms for certain Pokemon. It fit into that marketability. But with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we have another battle mechanic that doesn't alter appearance. Now, let's get technical here. It does alter their appearance, but it doesn't give them a brand new design. It coats every single Pokemon with a cookie cutter gem aesthetic and gives them a specific gemstone hat on top that is themed after their type. So every single Pokemon of the same Terra type gets the same little hat. That's a change. It's, it's an aesthetic change. It's marketable. But it seems like we're missing something, no? It seems like we're missing that brand new design, the Gigantamax of Dynamaxing for Terra Pokemon, for Terastalizing. We have a couple hints via some leakers that I won't go into here, and based on some things in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's lore, more importantly, that seem to point to the fact that in its DLC, which we are getting at the end of this year, part one, and then eventually part two in the winter, either of this year or the start of next year, that we could get brand new forms of Pokemon tied to the terastalizing phenomena. Now, everybody expects that we're going to get an explanation for what terastalizing is, how it's connected to what's going on with Hugh and the time machine and all of the story involving Sada and Turo and Area Zero in this DLC. We expect 
that it's going to have something to do with Terrapagos, the new crystal turtle that was introduced in the trailer for the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. This Pokemon was teased in Heath's journal, where we see a giant turtle the size of planets that seems to be impacting Heath and what he's doing with his research down in Area Zero. This is all to say that there is some link between Terrapagos, terrestrializing and area zero how all of this links together is going to be explained in the dlc i have no doubt how much detail we get is open to debate because sometimes the pokemon company likes to leave things open to interpretation but we are going to get the continuation of this story and in it i think we're going to get some brand new designs for paldean pokemon and for some older pokemon linked to terrestrializing and i wanted to shout out a couple pokemon in this video of who I think should get these forms. Some Pokemon that I think are deserving of some new lifeblood through terrestrializing. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Now, whatever form change comes from this new update for terrestrializing, I don't think it'll change the core of what terrestrializing is. I think you'll still have the type change. I think it'll still be something you can alter yourself separately, and you'll still be able to catch special Terra type Pokemon in raids. But there are eight Pokemon technically like 11, but three are grouped together that I think are going to get brand new terrestrialized forms, form changes that they don't already have. There are two we're going to knock out right out of the gate. I mentioned this in my previous video talking about Terrapagos. If you have not seen that video discussing what Terrapagos might be, what its typing might end up being, I will link a card in the corner right now. You can go check that out. It's a great video. I think Terrapagos is going to get a form change when it terrestrializes. It is going to be that giant destroyer of worlds space turtle form that we've seen in Heath's journal. That is number one. Number two, we get it almost every single generation. We're going to get special terrestrialized forms of the starter Pokemon. We're going to get them. It's inevitable. They'll be cool. There'll be some special things with them. In Pokemon Sword and Shields DLC, we got special Gigantamax forms for the starter Pokemon of Galar, and I would expect that in Paldea, it'll be no different if we do get this form change feature. So the three starter type Pokemon will get these as well. After that, we have a bunch of Pokemon from Paldea and some forms. A couple that I think just feel like they have another design coming. Spite Ops and Reverum, both of which in any other generation feel like second stage Pokemon and feel like they need to have an evolution. If I was redoing Paldea and I was going back to the developers and said, we're going to make some evolution families, Spite Ops and Reverum, I feel like they could use some more work. Additionally, if Team Star is going to have some point in the story or Penny is going to have some part of the story that she doesn't already have in the DLC, giving Reverum, a Pokemon that was utilized by Team Star, another terrestrialized form would be a really cool way to keep it relevant. It's a little bit boring. Uh, I definitely prefer Spite Ops to Reverum as it stands currently. I actually caught a shiny Spite Ops in my, let's, in my playthrough of Pokemon Violet, so I would love to see this so I can do a form change for my for my shiny Spite Ops, but Spite Ops and Reverum, uh, to me, feel like second stage Pokemon that never got another evolution. Two other ones that are in a different category, but still similar, are Glamora and Scorvillain. Glamora is a Pokemon that is utilized by Champion Gia. It is her ace Pokemon. It's not very good. A lot of people have speculated that Gita is going to have more of an impact on the story than we already know, that she seems a little bit shoehorned in, a little uninteresting. She's pretty easy to beat. The champion chip battle isn't really the height of the story in Scarlet and Violet. It's one of the three. So if we were to give her ace Pokemon a terrestrialized evolution, this would be a good way to continue to bring that Pokemon into relevance and to give Gita more of an importance on the story. I presume there would be a fight against her at some point in the DLC and you, she would evolve her Glamora using this new terrestrialized evolution and it would be a much stronger Pokemon. Scorvillain is a personal pick for me. I used a Scorvillain on my team for Pokemon Violet. I absolutely love it. I just think that it plays the design of a two-headed uh, uh, fire and, and grass plant a little too basic. 
I think there's a lot more that they could do with larger, outstretched, growing vines, multiple heads sprouting from one bulb. I think Score Villain and its, philo its design philosophy has a lot more potential, especially with that fire and grass typing that is so original. Score Villain, I think, could get an excellent, monstrously large design through terastalizing, and I think it would be awesome to see. Two other Pokemon, two older Pokemon that are in this game. Gumshoes is in the decks. I have always liked Gumshoes. I think it's one of the most fun Pokemon from the Alola region. If we were to just randomly get another basic normal type, a evolution, just like we got with Dunsparce finally in this generation, maybe giving a terastalized evolution to Gumshoes would be fun. Give a little Alola love as well. Lastly is Paldean Tauros. There are a bunch of different Paldean Tauroses that you can catch water type and fire type in Scarlet and Violet, and I'm thinking that a terastalized Tauros could kind of converge the two forms into one Tauros, a brand new type that takes design and uh, naming inspiration from both Paldean Tauroses into one terastalized form. These are eight or 11 Pokemon that I think should get terastalized forms, new designs, if we do get this feature in Scarlet and Violet's DLC. There are a bunch more, but these are the ones that I wanted to highlight here. So what do you guys think about my picks? What do you think about terastalized evolution coming in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. Let me know if you guys have other Pokemon that you'd like to see get terastalized forms that are brand new. I would love to hear your comments down below. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy what you see, be sure to subscribe and leave a like so you never miss any future content. My name has been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.